Boom shakalaka. Welcome to the JQ and Pete show. I'm JQ. This is the first time we're doing a video edition. Sorry, Pete couldn't make it. He was uh, climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. So, but he sends his regards. This is a big deal for me. I've uh, always wanted to do a video version. I haven't. I wanted to get some more followers, but you know what? I'm in this beautiful area. I went to my dad's place in uh, Pennsylvania for the weekend and it's beautiful here. It was supposed to be super sunny. It's a little bit cloudy. I'm wearing shades because the sun comes in and out. But this is really exciting. Thank you so much for being here. We're kind of we're gonna do a music roundup. It should be pretty quick, but I always have a lot to say. So let's get started. Uh, if this is your first time here, JQ and Pete show, we talk about music, movies, video games, pretty much whatever's on my radar. But those those are the top three. I would really love for all the new followers to. Uh, you know, like, comment, subscribe, come follow. We have a lot of stuff coming up. I think as of right now, we have a, I have a segment on this channel called JQ Collects, where I open Pokemon cards. It's pretty chill. I'm really enjoying it, but we're doing a giveaway. Pete actually joined that one. It was really cool. We filmed that together, but we're doing a giveaway. So join that. I'll put a link below. Uh, I recorded some other Pokemon stuff. I got some cool music coming out for the first time. So it's really exciting. And this whole thing is about making new friends, building a community, sharing some of the art and stuff that I make, particularly music. And I'm learning a lot about video production and stuff like that. So it's, it's really, really exciting and I'm happy to be here. So thank you so much and I appreciate that. This is a fun journey, let's get started. Uh, one of the first artists I wanna share is a musician named Gracie Abrams. She's got a new album coming out called The Secret of Us. The first single is called Risk. Her last album, which was produced by Aaron Destner, he's an amazing musician in the band called The National. He's most recently got acclaim from working with Taylor Swift on a couple of her recent albums. Particularly, my favorite of hers is called Folklore. It kind of continues that sonic landscape of acoustic guitars, um, really very personal, relatable lyrics. Gracie Evans has a great voice and is building a huge following. She recently opened for Taylor Swift and definitely got her more acclaim, but her music stands for itself. And I've watched some live concerts on YouTube and stuff, and her fans are really dedicated. So it's a, it's a really cool, inspiring thing to watch young new artists do their thing. Risk is cool because being uh, invested in a new relationship before it even started, taking that risk, taking that job, maybe it works out, maybe it doesn't, but that feeling, I love that feeling. It starts off with acoustic guitar, but it's, it's an up-tempo song, and it um, builds upon her sound because the... Music on her last album was a lot of down-tempo stuff, really personal, slow music. It's, it was beautiful. I love to see this new energy. The music video is fun. I'll put a link to it, but uh, it's, it's just a reminder to step out of your comfort zone musically and personally. And that's what I'm doing here by recording this video and starting this podcast and this new journey. Uh, the second singles, I've recently listened to it. Um, okay, the second single is called Close to You. A four on the floor dance song. It's got this pulsing synth, and I love that. Anything with a pulsing synth, I totally dig it. It actually reminds me of a song called, uh, what is it called? It actually reminds me of a song called Now I'm In It by Haim. It was a sync extra track, bonus track on their last album, but it reminded me of like early 90s uh, dance music. This has that vibe, that energy. And I feel like she's totally influenced by her live performances. She, you know, her music is sometimes can be down tempo and really personal, but there's so much energy when she brings it live. So I feel like when they were making this song and it had a new purpose and she uh, was really intentional, she probably envisioned, her, envisioned herself performing it live and I could hear it, I could feel it. I only listened to it a couple times, but it's kind of becoming my new favorite which seems like a theme in this this episode. Everything's becoming my new favorite. <laughs> I've done a lot of music discovery lately. You know, I'm trying to start with the newest stuff I've been listening to, but I've, I took a break on this podcast and I've been really lucky discovering a lot of new music here and there. So I'm starting from the top and this is the first one. The next one is even more recent actually. It's I've been, uh, I wanted to discover every once in a while, I love the genre of pop punk. If you listen to my previous episodes, you already know that. But every once in a while, I want to look up what the new artists are. There's some great bands that I already like, like uh, Neck Deep, their newest album. I'll, I'll, I'll shout them out if I already didn't in uh, future episodes. But I looked up this, I went on Reddit <laughs> and I was, someone looked up and said, hey, can you recommend new 
songs of 2024, punk pop. There's a lot of recommendations. I'm still sifting through it, but one that stood out was a band called, uh, was it Between You and Me, a band called Between You and Me, and they have a new EP out, and they did a collaboration with another punk pop band called Knuckle Puck. I, I've heard of their music before. They come and go, and I've, I like some tracks for, from them, but um, I've never heard of Between You and Me, and the EP is fun. It's awesome. It's modern. You know, I kind of steer clear from a lot of modern pop punk just because uh, it's positive. It's actually grown so much where different genres mixed to it, a lot of hardcore, even hip hop and stuff like that. And it's pretty awesome. But sometimes I just want to listen to guitars and, or whatever. And it's just a unique vibe, you know. Their lead single with the collaboration of the song, it's called Kill Vibe. It's just kind of like uh, shout outs here, haters. It's like, why are you always trying to kill my vibe? I love it, but it reminds me of the summer, listening when pop punk was like really the big genre out there. Early 2000s in college, driving in my car in the summertime. Fun, heavy guitar legs, super fast pace and chaotic and feel good. Worth a listen. I think I listened to it 45 times in the past two days. I love it. I've I've definitely done some lip sync battles um, in my bedroom with that song. <laughs> so definitely worth a worth a listen. Super catchy chorus. I think you'll like it if you like pop punk. So to keep up with alternative rock vibe, I discovered this new band. It's called I don't know how to actually pronounce it. D E H D. I should have looked that up before I recorded this. They have an album called Poetry. That's it was really cool how I discovered it. I did want to share it. I walk to work on 6th Ave. I work in uh, Manhattan, in Midtown, New York, and I pass Radio City every day. And it's really cool. I uh, My shift is early in the morning, so I get to experience 6th Avenue when there's no people there. If, if you're traveling to New York, wake up early, you know, watch the sunrise, walk through 6th Avenue and 5th Avenue at that time when there's not a lot of tourists and things. It is beautiful. Now, I love the energy when it's packed and stuff, but it's a whole nother experience, so I recommend that. But I walk past Radio City and I pass this um, this record store, this cool record store called uh, Rough Trade. People know it, look it up, it's really cool. And it's right connected right next to it, uh, to the, like the entrance to the Tonight Show. Anyway, they do these special promotions where they sell vinyl. And I think they do, sometimes they do like special pressings of these albums. I think when the last Green Day album came out, Saviors, they did a, special pressing and did a promotion because I saw in the same area a big poster promoting and talking about it and it's cool they showcase like an album and this is the album that they showcased uh, poetry by D-E-H-D I think they had the story of that it's like two different names of different bands and they combined it it's really cool two different lead singers too I discovered that album I saw the art I thought it looked really cool and sometimes I do that especially based off artwork I was like you know what let me go full force download the right away in my walk and I started listening to it. I had a feeling sometimes that's things, you know, things aren't as good. I was ready for that. Actually, probably too ready for it to suck or whatever. And it's become one of my favorite albums of the year. Now we're only halfway through and there's a lot of great albums that I've talked about in previous episodes and stuff like that. But this album is so awesome. Just alternative rock, great vocals, two different vocalists, female, male. I'm still learning about them, but gosh, I mean, some some standout tracks is the first song, Dog Days, the single Mood Ring, another song called Light On. I'm not going to talk too much about it. The whole album is so cohesive. I might do a deep dive soon because I love it that much. It really caught me off guard, particularly a song like Mood Ring is such a throwback song. When you hear it, you'll know. It just reminds me of old 50s songs with modern production and unique guitar lines and stuff like that really reverbed out. And it even starts with like this weird crushing bass, bass synth. So it kind of throws you off. You, you weren't, it starts with a synth that's really aggressive and then it goes into this beautiful song with a great chorus by the female vocalist. Worth a listen, trust me, I'm learning a lot. And in the comments, let me know if you, you know that band and what you like. Because this is the first time I've heard of them. I know they have previous work, and I'm definitely going to look into that. Continuing the alternative rock vibe, last of the new stuff, and I'm going to end it with a classic, a band called The Wallows. They've been around the past couple of years. They're awesome. Really catchy stuff. It's another album that's extremely cohesive, start to front. And they're about that. 
I've listened to them. They've come and go throughout my life in alternative rock. I've listened to them here and there, and I can't point back to some singles that I love, but I do really like them. What I've realized after listening to this album is they are becoming one of my favorite bands, favorite new bands. They are so versatile. They, they mix different genres together and all the genres that I like too. For this album, besides being cohesive, their lead singles, super summer vibes about relationships and stuff like that. But it reminds me of like a polished, the strokes. You mentioned the strokes. I mean, if you like them, you're gonna dig this song. Really cool. At least like live versions of it, YouTube Vivo, some live performances. I've listened to some cool I'm kind of becoming obsessed. But the album front to back, I can confirm that it's worth a listen. I was driving here and I bumped that album front to back and I put it on repeat. I just, it felt so good. I love it when albums just uh, are cohesive and it all feels like it was made together and it wasn't just like separate songs and stuff like that. You know, I think I'm a little bit old school in that way. Less about singles, more about the album. So maybe I'll do a deep dive in that in the future, but it's worth a listen thousand percent. I love that band. And um, yeah, like I said, they're becoming one of my most favorite bands. To end it off, I, I think I'm going to start doing it like this, like ending it with a classic song. The classic song I'm doing is Bob Marley and the Wavers. It's called Turn Your Lights Down Low. I discovered Bob Marley late in life, probably like in college. I took this cool class called History of Rock, and my, that teacher really inspired me. Different bands like the Beatles and um, Bob Marley. I remember I bought his first album, and I became an icon for a reason. And it's a beautiful thing. I made this new friend and she was so cool. I, I kind of put her on the spot in front of people. And I was like, uh, what's your song of the day? And I like, I used to like to do that to get to know people. No pressure, no nothing. But it is a lot of pressure, especially when there's like an audience. And I appreciated her. She, she participated. I forgot what she recommended. It was like a J. Cole song. It was really cool. But we got to talking and I, I was like, what kind of music, music do you like? And she's like, I really like reggae. And I, I was surprised just for myself because I haven't listened to that genre in a long time. And I was like, you know, I'm really new at this genre. Can you recommend some? And it was really thoughtful. She sent me a list of songs. We were trading songs back and forth. And I just, I like it when people just go all in on things. She didn't have to do that. She could have just said anything and just moved on and walked away. But everything was with detail. And I was like, can you send me the songs and tell me why you like them? And she did. And uh, this was maybe the first or second. Yeah, this was the first song. She sent me this, the original version and then the other version. Um, with Lauren Hill, but I listened to this version and I couldn't even listen to the other songs that she recommended. I just, you know, when they're classic musicians, when they, um, when you hear this song and I've heard it before, but I haven't heard it a long time. And they, if sounds like you've listened to them for the first time, there you go. I was a little speechless about it, but it felt so new. And I, I remember I called her and I told her, I was like, you know, I, I flew to Jamaica because my, fr my friend Shane, you, you met him, he was on the podcast, the uh, Eurostripe CEO. He's Jamaican and he recommended for me to go. And I went by myself just to relax on the beach. And gosh, everybody's singing Bob Marley. And it's it's just so cool that his music has lasted forever. He's famous for many songs, including this one, but he's probably more famous for more of his other songs, other love songs and um, politically driven songs. But this one was so romantic. And I actually started listening to it on my walk home walk home on 6th Avenue in the city. And I stopped in my tracks and I called her. I was like, you don't even know. Um, I forgot how romantic this song is. It's such a beautiful song. I listened to it over and over and over. The melodies are perfect. The lyrics are perfect. Everything about this song is perfect. It, you, the music lovers, you probably already know and you're shaking your head and you're maybe you're rolling your eyes, but that's the thing, man. Old, new, there's so much to listen to. And if you haven't listened to it, I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. I uh, perform every once in a while. I actually put like a little clip on this channel, this YouTube channel, Keys of Culture, uh, of me singing a Bob Dylan song. And it was cool. It got a lot of views and a lot of support from friends and family and stuff like that. But um, I'm performing there. <laughs> I wanted to surprise my friend. I was like, yeah, maybe I'll sing this song. But I'm not used to singing songs on that, that reggae beat and stuff like that. And I usually change it and make it my vibe. And he sings kind of off the tempo of the song so i'm having a hard time singing it but i'm determined i'm determined to learn it uh, even if it's okay i just want to sing it in front of people because it's such a beautiful song because i know once you hear the melody it's one of those songs you kind of look up and 
it lights up your day. Thank you so much for recommending that song. I hope you like it if it's if you're a new listener. And thank you so much for being a part of this podcast, JQ and Pete Show, Music Roundup. We got plenty more to come. I hope you like this video version. You, I'll put a link if you're listening to it on the podcast apps. Audio version will have both up. But there's so much more to come. I'm really excited. Thank you so much for being here. Um, spread the word. Peace.